this video, I want to show you how on the 68 Chevrolet pickup to replace this old externally regulated 55 amp alternator, which was uh, what come out in the factory. Well, this one was put on, you know, far after that, but you know, you get the idea. To a more modern uh, 105 amp internally regulated, and slightly messy, uh, alternator. This came off of a 95 Lumina. It's just pretty much what I had laying around. So that's the reason why I'm using this one. Okay, first thing, you may notice I've already changed the, the pulleys out, but I was going to show you how to do that. Okay, this pulley, your serpentine pulley that was on the um, Lumina is what was originally on here. And there's no cooling fan um, on the outside of this alternator. The cooling fan is internal. You can see it just a little bit in there. But okay, this needs to come off. The easiest way I found to do it is an impact gun. And just hang on to it. And there you go. And it just pretty much easily comes apart. This part you don't need anymore. And you swap them. You do the same thing on this one. And you just swap them out and put the V-belt pulley on. Okay, well, that's it. Now, as you can see, this has the two connections. Leaky air hose. Has the two connections here. And this one also has two connections, but you don't need both of them for our application. You will only need... I cut the wire off. It's it's an old junk car, so I cut the wires off of the wiring harness. It's not going to hurt anything. But as you can see, this plug has two wires coming out of it. There's a four-prong plug here. We're only going to use the one. It's the one that has you probably can't see that. There's a little L. This one is the field over here. You don't want to hook it up to that. You want to hook it up to the one that says L. Okay, and that is your warning light on the dash. That's all this does. What it does is when your alternator stops charging, your belt comes off, the alternator quits, whatever. This wire will light up your... Uh, your generator light on this. It says generator but it just means it's not charging. Okay, also, if you notice, this terminal is much bigger than this terminal. That's because of the output is double. So, you don't just take this alternator, stick in there, and hook the same wire up because the wire, the, ori the original wire that went to the original alternator is too small. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, under here we have the wiring harness that goes to the alternator. I've already cut. The blue wire is the one that you want. I'm going to leave the white wire in the plug and I'm just going to tape everything up. Okay, this wire is actually a ground. And uh, I think it used to be a black wire. It's got orange paint on it, but yeah, you can see the black underneath of it. Okay, this, this is a black wire. That is your ground. It was hooked directly to the back of the alternator. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll just hook that back on the alternator. It doesn't really have to be. It doesn't matter that much. Uh, it's going to ground through the engine block. But anyway, okay, this is your hot lead, okay? This is like a number 10 wire. It's not going to be enough. If you just hook it up straight like this, 
what you're going to end up with is this wire is going to burn in two. You're going to end up with a fire. Okay, what you need, which I got this one from the old car. I just cut it out of the wiring harness too. I got this power lead. And this is what I'm going to hook to my battery. Positive. Alright, before you start doing anything, uh, make sure that you take a battery terminal off before you even take the alternator off. Okay. Now, that has the basic wire. You know, you got to run it up. And I will probably run it under the engine up and zip tie it to everything and run it up to the battery terminal. And there's plenty. I've already me measured it. Okay, and I'll just end up cutting this one off. Okay, and it also needs to be cut off at the terminal. But the next important part is your voltage regulator. Since this alternator that was originally on this truck is an externally regu regulated alternator, this is your regulator. It's normally mounted up under the firewall up in here but it's hard to see down in there so I took it out don't need it anymore anyway okay you have to cut these two wires and tie them together and then this has got to be unplugged and I will probably just terminate these two wires they don't have to be hooked together or hooked to anything but the blue wire and the brown wire need to be hooked together this runs up to your light on the dash, the generator light. Okay. That is really all the modifications. I'll go ahead and I'll make the modifications to the wiring and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, the alternator is in. Uh, you may have noticed that the ears were in di a different spot. This ear on the other alternator was up here. It's better to get one with the same ears, but I'm just using what I had. See, it used to hook to this spot right here on this bracket. Actually, this bracket I flipped over, it used to stick up this way. Okay, now it sticks down. <laughs> but it still works fine. I just had to put, I had to bend it up there, and I had to put this on this side. But it, it will work fine. It's solid. Actually shaking the whole truck with it. Okay, as far as the wiring goes, here, as you can see, is the blue wire. It is terminated into, on this wiring harness, it was the brown wire with the white tracer. Okay, the brown wire that is just solid brown, no tracer. I just put a terminal cap on. And I'm going to tape it up. I just wanted to leave it open so you could see what I was talking about. And the white, or I think it's kind of turned yellow now. It may have been yellow to begin with. Uh, wire. Yeah, it probably was yellow before. Um, has no function now at all. It goes to where the regulator used to be. And it's terminated inside of here. And I've got everything spliced up and taped up in here okay and that can just go out of the way up in here okay I have cut off the 10 the number 10 battery lead uh, the red wire that was there before and I have replaced it with this one ran it down under the engine and brought it up zip tied it I don't want it rubbing against stuff and I have terminated it under the battery terminal here. So this one I was going to take it loose, but I realized this is the wire that runs to the fuse box. And it runs across. And it runs all the way up here. And it's actually wire nutted. I don't want to unhook that because nothing will work in the truck, so I'm going to leave it hooked up. Okay, that is all of the wiring that you have to do on it. And I just remounted it in there, got it all tightened up. And 
the meter is hooked to the battery. I had the battery on the charger. Uh, it's 12.65. Pretty good sized battery, so that may have been one of the reasons that it killed my alternator. That and uh, I've upgraded the ignition. Um, I put halogen headlights in and all that kind of stuff. And it probably was too much for that little 55 amp alternator. Okay, let's see if she'll fire up. Let's try her. Okay. First off, when you turn on the key switch, without the engine running, you should get a generator light. There you go. Okay. We have the generator light. Okay, and my oil pressure light should be on. I'm going to check that out. That oil pressure light should be on right now because the engine's not running. I'm going to have to figure out why that is. But anyway, uh, I know the oil's good in it. So let's try it. She started running and the generator light went off indicating it's charging. It is obviously charging. It's up to 13.8 volts. It is working fine. Looks a little funny. But it's working fine. And that is how you put a modern alternator internal, internally regulated larger alternator on a older GM vehicle or probably any vehicle. And I'm gonna take the rest of those wires up and uh, see you next time.